up, everybody? I'm blessed and free. Welcome back to another episode of DOC TV. So you guys already know on this channel, I bring people on so they can tell their story, man, on what it was like for them going to prison and jail. And uh, today's guest uh, was reached out to on Instagram. He's got some crazy uh, jail stories out in LA County, which is like a notorious jail and shit goes down. So man, why don't you go ahead and tell the people uh, watching what your name is and where you're from? Oh, what's up everybody? My name is Sergio and I'm originally from Los Angeles, California, born, not born there, but raised mainly there, middle school, elementary school, high school, all that stuff. So, so you grew, you grew up in a gang environment then basically, right? Yeah, most definitely. So when was it that, that you started getting in trouble, man? How long, how long did you make it out there before, uh, (laughs) before you started getting arrested? I guess like a juvenile charges. Um, my fir- very first one was like in the ninth grade. Did you get probation or you went to? Yeah, so I did like a 10 day stunt in the uh, ju- juvenile pro- um, juvenile hall and then they get, let me out on house arrest for the first time. And then once I violated that, I violated my house arrest with another charge which got me sent to probation camp, which I'm pretty sure is nothing like the JIT camps, but like it's, it's still pretty, uh, Pretty what, what do you guys call it out there? A, pro, a juvenile probation camps. They're like they're like um, <clears throat> they're basically like I I, I want to say it's like a jit camp, but like not as much like rowdiness. I don't know how to exactly explain it, but it's basically like a second stage for juvenile hall people who have like repeat offenders go for like a longer time. All right. So what, is it like classrooms, but you're locked up, but you got to go do classes during the day and shit? Yeah, there's a legit school on site and then you go to school in the morning and then you come back to a dorm with a bunch of other youth offenders and, you know, like. All right. So you did that. And then when you got out, how long was it before you got, you know, in trouble again? Uh, after I got out, it wasn't more than a year. I After I got out of juvie, um, I turned 18 in camp. So when I got out, um, I was pretty much on my same shit. And that's when I caught my first like real county jail, like a. Uh, an adult case. And that's when you went into LA County? Yeah, that's when I started my career in LA County. (laughs) All right, it's quite the career, man. But so tell the people watching, man, what's it like going into the notorious like LA County jail? Were you banging at that time? No, no, I have never gangbang. I have never been affiliated with anything. I'm just a resident. I just got mixed up with the wrong people. Um, (laughs) Definitely going into LA County is it's 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 wild because there's so many just the sheer amount of people that get off on the bus with you is wild and then um just the facility is is gross it's really nasty up in there and just going in there as an asian you automatically feel the pressure of like you know there's not much you know people like me in here right now you just see the you know vast majority of people not being asian so you're just like okay you know <laughs> So how does that work then for, for you being Asian? Like is there's obviously other Asians in the jail, right? Yeah. Yeah. There definitely, there's a lot of Asians, but they're just all spread out and like each dorm or cell block you hit, like, you know, you'd be lucky if you were to find like a group of five to 10, that's like a really good dorm. (laughs) Other than that, it's pretty much just like you have like two other Asians in there or three other Asians. And, and that goes for the County jail and the wayside supermax. So you know, there's just not many, but there's definitely, there's definitely Asians. There's more in the, um, the prison system, not the county jail. All right. So what, so what did you go through when you were in LA County? I mean, obviously you have no numbers no. and you're not affiliated. Like where, how long was it before you ran into a problem because of those, because of those issues? Um, it wasn't long, honestly, my first, uh, my first month in there, as soon as I hit Wayside Supermax, which is all the dorm living, that's when I had to run my first fights because of just people trying to test me, um, obviously, because I'm Asian, and, you know, people are going to try you, and, um, and, you know, I obviously had to fight back, and I'm not, I'm not going to say that I won any of my fights, but, you know, I definitely tried, and it doesn't take long for you to get into some trouble <laughs> up in the jail system, especially in LA County, um, but yeah, most of my issues were at Wayside Supermax, and that's also where I like experienced my very first jailhouse riot, and that stuff was was insane. So what happened, man? How'd that shit go down? Was it was it due to like race stuff? It was mainly racial. Um, so basically in Wayside they have a they have program time, and they leave the TV on overnight in some dorms, and um, 
where the TV is plugged in, they have a little socket and that's the only outlet inside the entire dorm. So that's the only way people are really able to like spark a cigarette with like the whole pencil lead trick, but it's way up in the ceiling. So it's kind of burnt when you're trying to do it. But anyway, the, the blacks were trying to start like light up a cigarette and the Asians roll with the blacks in the LA County jail system. Um, that's just because of numbers and people get a misconception that I'm saying that is the same thing in prison, but that's not the case. I'm just saying in LA County jail specifically, the Asians are running with the blacks, but it's not the case in the California prison system. But that's anyway, weird the weird how it's like that, man. Yeah, I know. And people think like, I'm not, I'm like saying some bullshit, but it's, that's just what it is. Um, <clears throat> if you go to the LA County jail system, others run with the brothers and that's just how it is. The woods run with the South siders and that's just how things are clicked up. So did you uh, ever think uh clicking up when you were in there? No, I mean like like joining a gang while I was in there. Yeah. No, no, no. I was never thinking about getting put on, especially not in jail. But I mean, I tried to hold my own, but obviously, you know, I was trying to program with the other people and just, you know, hold my own and just stand my ground as much as I can. <laughs> but yeah, the riot. So the yeah, the blacks were trying to slide up a cigarette and you know, they got caught, the program got shut down. All the TVs went off. Nobody got their canteen for like a week. No phone privileges. And there was a lot of racial tension. And the Southsiders felt like they needed to do something about it. And the riot cracked off. And I was asleep at the time. And it was like in the mid, like midnight, I'm going to assume. And they pulled me right off my bunk. And I got sliced in my face. I told this story on another interview. But yeah, they got me in my face over here. I had to go to the infirmary, get some stitches. But yeah, it was like... I was the only Asian in that dorm. There was maybe give or take five or 10 black people and everybody else was Southsiders, Woods. And it was so just, uh, why did you get slashed though? I don't know, dude. They literally pulled up and pulled me off my bunk and they hit me in the face. I don't even know why they did that. I was asleep. Like I was, what the fuck? I was asleep. Like I don't, I don't have any issues. I was in that dorm for maybe one week before that cracked off. So I don't think I had any bad blood with anybody. I'm not a gang member. I don't have any enemies. So I was like, what the hell is going yeah, on? Yeah, but you know, man, like in jail, like you could have just walked in the dorm and some dude in there, you could have looked familiar and he could have been like, hey, bro, that's that dude that robbed my cousin. And they've been, they were plotting on you and not even knowing it. You know what I mean? Obviously, you know, you weren't the dude, but yeah, you know no. how shit goes in there, man. Like, yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah. <laughs> I just couldn't so, think of it at the time. Never I was just know, man. by surprise. What happened after that? You went to the infirmary and did you ever hear anything? about that situation after that well yeah after going to the infirmary i went straight to the hole because whenever anybody's involved with right, any type right. of even if you're a victim i got to the hole and the uh one of the deputies asked me if i wanted to press charges i knew that if i did that that was not going to be good for me so i said no i don't even know what happened i fell that's all i know and so that's, that's the last yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the last i heard about that situation so i did like seven days in the hole or something and then after they cleared me to go back into general population, I got sent back to the county jail because I got put on K4 status. And basically, uh, you have these wristbands in county jail. And if you get into an incident with uh, another inmate in the jail and it's recorded, um, they put a little like number on your wristband and it's called K4. And basically, that prevents you from ever getting housed with those people again. In our jail, they call it uh, being non-compatible. So you're non-compatible mm. with somebody in the pod. So it's the same shit over here, too. When you were in L.A. County, did your people like send you money so you could get commissary and canteen in there? Yeah. So my mom already knew I had like a drug problem before going. Obviously, before going into jail, she knew what type of problems I had. So she would never actually send me money. She would send me commissary packages, like pre-bought okay. packages that she could buy. So I couldn't get drugs inside the jail, even if I wanted to with the money that she sent me. All right. Well, she was a smart lady, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pulling one over on mom, man. That's yeah. running <laughs> no, over definitely. with, bro. <laughs> Uh, when you were in there though, and you were getting the packages sent in, what's commissary day like in LA County? Cause I know in our County, like when commissary comes, there's a lot of be people owing shit. There's a lot of people getting robbed. So how does that go down in there with all the politics and, and like, is that allowed? Like, are you allowed to fucking rob someone in there and get a, or without, you know, any repercussions? Um, no, you, there are repercussions and a uh, commentary day. Well, in the dorm living places, like they call you one by one up to the dorm. So everybody knows what you're getting. Right. If you, you Big know, boy they, bag coming back from the dorm. Yeah. yeah. Like it's all out there. So like, there's no hiding it. Um, but 
not, there's not so much people getting jacked. There's just attacks. And like, if you are a South Sider and you're in the dorm and you get commentary, I wasn't a part of that group, but I know that they have to, you know, it's, I, you guys consider breaking it off and like kind of fo- like, you know, getting folded, but I don't know if that's what's happening because they're just like, everybody is kind of just paying a tax. Like, I don't know what it is. Even the, even the, official they're paying members. rent. You're going to give us $3 every week and you're good. Right. And they're like, okay. And they hand $3 that's breaking it off. But in that instance, that's paying rent. They just really sense. don't, they don't know it or they do. And they don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> You're right. Right. So when you were in there, man, like new to going to jail, never been to prison, you're in LA County. What did you feel like when you walked up to get your canteen package and you're walking back to your cell and you know, everybody's looking at you? Yeah. Like what was, what, what, how did that go down for you, man? Cause I, I never asked that, but I know there's like anybody goes through that. You know what I mean? Cause everybody's always looking at everybody. That's how I got into one of my first like instances of somebody challenging. I already me know. Yeah. You know what I mean? They wanted to, they asked me to borrow something. That's how they hit me first. They were like, Hey, can I, you know, can I borrow a suit? Yeah. It was another brother. You know what I mean? So um, really there isn't interracial like crime going on in there. It's really like any extortion that's going on. It's within your own race. So, yeah, one of the brothers were trying to ask me, like, can I borrow a suit, this and that? And I and I was trying to stay firm. I was like, no, nah, I don't want to, you know, I'm not really trying to let you borrow anything. You know, this is me. I don't really got much. And that's when he started getting aggressive. And then, you know, he wanted to run the fade. He said, you know, I'm going to need that fade underneath the stairs. And I went there. I did my thing. I didn't win. But, you know, after that, they left me alone. So I knew that was the way to go. After being in juvenile camp and just seeing how, you know, it was a doggy dog world in there, I kind of got the got the vibe on how I should be acting, especially with my commissary in county jail. So, you know, that's how I got into one of my first, like, you know, little, little fights. (laughs) Yeah. He was like trying to finesse you to like, pretend to be your friend. Let me borrow this. Let me borrow that. Yeah. You ain't getting none of that back. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And it's just going to keep happening. And, you know, it's just. So when you were in there, other than the stabbing or the slice that you got and, you know, the fade under the stairs, like what was the craziest thing you went through in there? Honestly, um, besides the whole getting cut in the face, just seeing somebody like a, a thief getting his like getting DP'd like by 50 Southsiders. It was it was one of the Hispanics that stole like an orange juice or something. And they were taking care of him on the top tier. And all you just hear, you just hear like thousands of feet. Just, and just like witnessing somebody get their their shit kicked in like that was just insane. Yeah, I mean, it's another I- level. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, I was, you know, the, you know, you're told not to look and you got, kind of have to get used to that at first. You're just like, holy shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's hard not to look, man. But they do say that because that's what draws the cops in if, you know, they get everybody staring at it. But so did you I know you said that you went to county jail because you obviously had a drug problem and shit like that. Did you get like whatever ended up happening with that? Did when you were in jail, do they have programs there where you could like address that? They don't really they have like um or what is that AA and uh NA meetings, but they don't have any like extensive like help for you. It's mainly just like, you know, are you going to a rehab after you get out of here? How long did you do that time in LA County Jail? Uh, I did eight months for a residential burglary. I was fighting going back in, back and forth from court um, for eight months until I got a six-year joint suspension and a one-year sentence in a inpatient rehab. And that's when I was last in jail. All right, man. So, I mean, what's one thing you could tell somebody that's maybe, uh, you know, deciding to rob a house and get a burglary charge? Like, what did you learn from your whole experience going into the LA County jail system. It's, it's, it's not worth your time. Like, I don't think it's worth that at all. Like the, (laughs) the payoff for the amount of time and the amount of bullshit that you're going to be dealing with. If you're thinking about doing something like that, it just doesn't make any sense. Like just (laughs) at a, on a business standpoint and just, just no, this is not the way to go. So after you got sentenced then to, you know, you did your jail time and your rehab time, how did, how did life end up for you, man? Like After I got out of rehab, I just, you know, stayed with my job that I had, my little part-time job, kept doing my thing, and I eventually met my wife. And now I'm, you know, living with my wife. We're married and been clean for six years now and just been doing my thing, you know, haven't touched the drugs and just 
you know, kept it pushing after I got out. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. That's yeah. what's up, man. I love to see people that, you know, change their life around because I know the struggle and, you know, I know it's not easy and a lot of people don't get it. You know what I mean? So big props to you for doing that, man. Um, do you have any social media you want to give uh, the people watching how they can find you? Yeah, I only have two platforms that I'm really on and it's YouTube. Uh, and my YouTube is just Sergio Kwan with the space in the middle. And my right. Instagram is HCIM underscore Korea. And those are my only real two platforms that I'm on. So that's about it. <laughs> if you guys want to find me, you know, you can check out my YouTube channel. Yeah, man. And I'll put those links in the description. So you guys watching uh, want to go check him out. Just check in the description of this video. Well, listen, man, I appreciate you coming on the channel and uh, sharing your stories. You got some crazy stories, but hey, you did the right thing. You turned your life around and that's what it's about, man. So I appreciate you coming on the channel, man. I appreciate you having me, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, not a problem, man. Hey, if you guys are new and you're tuning in for the first time, man, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you've enjoyed this episode, hit that thumbs up on the way out. And with that, it's DOC TV and we're out.